Welcome everyone to today's Cosmos webinar series presentation, The Winning Argument, Modern Legal Billing. Presenting today, we have Erica Bursler, the Director of Strategic Communication at Cosmox. Erica has nearly a decade of experience in the legal software industry, catering to the specialized technology needs of small and mid-sized law firms. She has given numerous presentations across the country on legal technology subjects such as law practice, technology management, cloud computing, legal billing, and trust accounting compliance. And with that, I will hand the presentation over to Erica. Great, thank you so much. So before diving into today's topic, I do want to give a reminder that this is part one of a three-part series. Uh, as mentioned, our first uh, item, which will be covered today, is modern legal billing. Then on the 20th, we have legal specific accounting, and on the 27th is specific to trust accounting. So do be sure to visit us back for those additional sessions. But today, uh, we will be covering billing. So. What's our agenda for today's topic? We'll first talk a little bit about, since we are talking about modern billing, what defines a 21st century modern law firm? Uh, it's always good to kind of get an, an idea of where your firm may stand in terms of technology and where the room is to grow. Then understanding the legal billing workflow, we'll take some time just to go through the normal functions of um, whether it's a monthly or an as needed billing cycle and then how modern tools can enhance your practice. So of course, we're gonna be talking a lot about leveraging technology um, and how that can help, especially with billing. There's a lot that technology can help uh, to simplify your billing workflow and also make it a lot more efficient overall. So we will be referencing that. At the very end, um, I will use Cosmlex for a very short visual uh, just to see what billing would be like in a modern, legal practice management tool. And for those who may not be familiar with Cosmlex, we are a cloud-based legal specific uh, practice management software. So with that, let's start with uh, talking about 21st century law firms. Now currently, this is a typical law firm setup. You likely fall in one of these two categories. Of course, this is not all inclusive, but it's definitely the two biggest. The first is legacy desktop systems. You might be using um, applications that are installed locally in your office or on your server, maybe like a PC Law, Abacus, Time Slips, those types of programs. And very often when those firms are looking to a new tool, they think of these points. First off, you're missing cloud benefits. Uh, so a lot of the modern aspects of technology are missing. So the mobility, being able to use any device, being able to access on your phone or your tablet, those benefits are of course missing. You do need to consider, of course, the hardware and the server requirements. Um, is your system outdated? Does your hardware in your office support whatever you're using? Is it being maintained and backups are being done properly? And then of course, the lack of modern functionality. What comes with modern tools is new, I like to call them cool features. Of course, it is um, you know, fun to use, but also typically very beneficial to your firm's workflow as well. Those would not be available in the older tools. So when looking to cloud, that solves all these issues. Of course, you get the cloud benefits, you don't have to worry about your hardware, your server requirements, you get the modern functions, but then the cloud space is a little bit different as well. Very often those tools require a separate generic accounting program and sometimes other additional tools as well, which can put you in a position when it comes to standard compliance and just your general operations. How is that going to function day in and day out? So this is typically where probably most of you are currently residing. And if you're ever considering about modernizing or changing the tools that you use, these may be some things to think about. Now, overall, um, when we're talking about modern practice management, I don't think I'm talking about anything new. Most of you are probably familiar with the benefits of cloud, but I do like to revisit because everyone's reasons for modernizing their practice may be different, uh, may fall in one of these three categories or for all reasons. So the first is mobility. Um, if you are looking for that any device access, uh, like I said, that both allows, you know, anywhere access from home, from your client space, from court, uh, really anywhere, but also any device. There's a lot of law firms that are really becoming more hybrid when it comes to Mac versus PC versus I like to use a tablet or an iPad, I like to use my laptop. So having that flexibility uh, is always a plus. It does help, of course, with the 
service you're able to provide your client if you're able to access information on the spot as opposed to having to get back to them. Mobile apps, um, really everything we do as consumers has an app. You always say there's an app for that. There literally is apps for thousands if not millions of things uh, and your business is part of that as well. Why not be able to do your time or expense entries or managing your invoices or your calendar? And we'll talk a little bit about how this will factor into your billing workflow. And don't forget about staffing from anywhere. If you're able to, uh, let's say, hire an outside billing clerk or even your bookkeeper that might not work in your office but work from their home or from a different location, you're not restricted any longer when using modern tools. Uh, and especially when you're talking about uh, outsourcing some of those activities, which a lot of smaller law firms do, it makes it that much easier. Then you get into modern features. So when you're using modern tools, you're gonna get the newer features. The older tools, unless they plan on um, updating the technology, very often stay where they are. So they're always improving. There is healthy competition um, in the modern tech space. Even in the legal industry, there's a lot of buzz happening around different features like client portals, which are um, websites that you can actually link to your client and share information with them. Very helpful with the billing workflow, which we'll talk about in a moment. Online payments, you know, being able to, your client to pay an invoice online by credit card. And new integrations. If you're looking for different products to work together, the new tools play nicely with each other and you don't have to worry about compatibility issues and different technologies. And the last is no IT worries. Uh, when you're dealing with server or hardware, of course you have to worry about backups, how those are being maintained, the software itself. Is it being updated? Is it on the latest version? Is everybody on the same version? You're dealing with servers ensuring that the actual hardware of the server is up to date and that it's functioning properly. All of those go away when you're dealing with modern cloud, app, cloud applications. Uh, so that sometimes is a driver as well. So all depends on how your firm currently functions, what's working, it's what's not working, as to why you may want to move into more modern tools. Now I do like to point out when we talk about those three areas before modern functions, mobility, IT worries. Think about your functions as well. For everything that's listed here, your billing, your accounting, your trust accounting, you may be using one tool, three tools, or six tools. And it all depends on what, how your workflow was originally set up. I know very often the way a firm was set up from day one, sometimes it just stays that way because it's easier than changing. But think about these different functions and if whatever workflow you have is efficient, if it's streamlined, are they communicating properly with each other, whether that's through double data entry and integration, um, certain functions being in the same system. So with this session today, of course, we'll be focusing on legal billing. So we will be discussing that overall workflow and how technology, especially modern tools, can help to really take you to the next level. But always think about it big picture. Uh, billing is one part of your overall law practice. And this webinar series is actually designed to kind of take you through all the different areas. Okay, so the workflow. This is just spelling out uh, basically what happens in a billing workflow. Now you may have different types of billing. Uh, you may do monthly, quarterly, annually, when the case ends, as needed. Uh, so there are variables, of course, but in general, when you're doing your billing, you have to ensure that your time and expense is entered. Uh, even for your flat fee or your contingency cases, tracking those expenses is vital because you do need to bill for those. Reviewing those pre-bills before they actually get sent out. Every firm's a little bit different as to what their workflow is for this, but it could be a big delay in the billing process if not done in an efficient manner. Generating those invoices and delivering them to the clients, receiving payments on those. If no payments are received, of course, then you gotta look at collections and also the replenishment of retainers. And then of course, productivity reporting, seeing what actually took place, what got billed, what didn't, and what came of all of that. So we'll go through each one of these areas, talk about 
the basic functions within each, um, I do recommend just kind of thinking of your firm and the workflow that you have, uh, picking out maybe improvements that can be made, and then we'll tie in the modern uh, functionality side of it. So the first step, as I mentioned, um, in the billing workflow is time and expense tracking. So the first step is to capture, obviously, your time and expense. Uh, we do recommend doing that as quickly as possible at the same time or once that item is complete is ideal. I would say if you can't do that, then end of day. Because when it becomes even end of week, your memory of what took place, the details that might be with that, and even just remembering it in general diminishes. So we should not rely on memory, uh, even if it's just for a few days, because that's how things slip through. And with time, of course, you end up not billing for the work that you're doing, but with expenses, that's money that you're actually um, putting out for your client. So you've already paid whatever that fee may be. Maybe it's a filing fee or some court cost. You already paid that. And if you don't bill it to your client, you're not gonna get reimbursed. So entering your time and expense in a reasonable amount of time will both increase your accuracy, but also at the end of the month, when you're doing your pre-bill review, you're spending less time thinking back on what was missed. You'll have a, a lot less uh, cracks in your full monthly record. Then you need to think about linking all billable activities. I'm sure you have appointments and events and tasks um, that the firm completes on a regular basis by multiple people, not just yourself, that eventually have to get billed to the client. So ensuring that those items are captured and actually make it into the billing cycle is crucial as well. Then we get into the pre-bill and the invoicing stage. Now, for most of you, this may be at the end of the month, but not necessarily. So you wanna be able to review your pre-bills, um, look at those WIPs, make sure they're accurate, um, that everything is inputted the best way possible. Again, by doing your daily entries, it will make this process a lot smoother. You need to, of course, make your edits. So you want this whole workflow, this pre-bill area is different in every firm that I speak with. Some you print out a physical written report where somebody marks it up with a pen, gives it to a biller, they make updates, and then they finalize. Other firms, a much more modern way of going about it is to physically go in as the attorney, make those edits yourself, and finalize it. The biller can generate and do everything else, but making those edits in one place as opposed to two is a big time saver. And then of course, finalizing just to make sure that no additional edits are made, but it gives a cue to the biller to say, these are ready to go. Then you have your invoice generation and delivery. This is one area where if you do any sort of batch, whether it's monthly billing or you're billing a few matters at once, the ability to do that in a batch is a definitely a great time saver. Um, but of course, even with individual billing, you wanna make sure it's as efficient as possible. So generating those bills, uh, getting them to your client, there are many ways to deliver. Uh, we'll talk about some of the modern options, but of course you can print, email, or even share directly with your client. Then it comes to receiving payments. So of course, if you're lucky enough to get those payments in a timely manner, you need to be able to record them. Um, you can receive cash or check, maybe you're debiting an existing retainer, or some of you may be even offering credit cards as an option for your clients to pay. So it depends on your practice sometimes, it depends on your clientele, uh, but having um, a variety of options is always helpful. Just think of yourself as a consumer. When you go to a store or a restaurant, you like to have the option available. Whether or not you use it is one thing, but you like to be able to have the option. And then we talk about collections. Now this is one area that I do think gets neglected quite a lot because it's cumbersome, it's, it's mundane very often, nobody really likes doing it, but it is a core piece to the income of the firm because the legal industry is actually one of those areas that does not get paid rapidly. You know, your clients are typically um, waiting of the last minute or maybe asking a lot of questions or delaying the payment. That's quite common. So collections, you know, having an invoice 30 days old is not uncommon. So you need to ensure you have something in place to ensure that you know what or who owes what since when. 
So to be able to take a snapshot as of today and say, what people owe me money? Since when, so how overdue are they? And what's the amount? So that's the first step, having that list, being able to identify who owes what. That's usually the hardest part. If you can leverage your billing tool to do that for you, it's a huge, huge advantage because that way you're not, you know, scrambling through records, trying to figure out the math yourself, figure out who owes what since when. It's all there for you. So that's the first step. But also don't forget about your retainer depleting. If you handle retainers for your clients, they are not full forever. Every matter is a little bit different. Uh, you might have some that deplete rapidly. You know, you may ask for 5,000 up front and know that that's only going to last maybe two months. Um, and that may, it could also help to negotiate your retainer better, but sometimes they burn quicker than you expect. So to be able to keep an eye on that is important to know um, not only what they have, but to look at the whips, to look at what's due to be billed and compare that with a retainer. Because if you're due to bill $6,000 and they only have $2,000 in the retainer, you're setting yourself up for a collections issue when it comes time to bill them. So just having that foresight to, to see ahead as to what's going to take place and be able to adjust accordingly. So the first two points are all about being aware knowing when somebody is past due or knowing when somebody's retainer is low. But you also need to have some way of notifying them. Are you calling them individually? Are you sending them a letter? Are you sending individual emails? You want whatever it is to be as efficient as possible because this could be a monthly activity for you. And you want to do whatever it takes to make it streamlined, quick, easy. The easier it is, the more likely it is it's going to happen. All right, so now that we talked about the overall workflow. That's what takes place in billing. And I'm sure none of that was new to all of you. You may have different um, roles in that billing process. Some of you might just really handle the time and expense, some maybe the invoicing or a combination of both. It's important to know what that workflow is. Think about your firm and how that's currently functioning and ways that that can be improved. So some tips here in regards to modern legal billing. So really modernizing the entire process mobile access. I have to say for um, whenever I talk about mobile access, specifically for law firms, the first thing I think of is time and expense entries because that affects your bottom line directly. If items are dropped or items are missed, that can be just completely lost income. So that's rule number one. And I also understand that, especially if you have multiple attorneys in a firm, let's use the example of five attorneys. They may not all like to use a mobile app. I get it, or they may not all like to use tablets, but to have the option means that those who are open to it will have that return on investment because that additional time they're using to learn whatever it is, the app that they may be using, they'll see that those items don't slip through. Having a 360 degree view of everything related to a case. It is not only convenient, it's not only you know just smart record keeping, but it promotes accurate billing. If you're looking at a particular case and you see that there was 30, you can clearly see there was 30 um, calendar events or appointments and there was 20 tasks that were completed, you can see if those items were billed for or not. You can see if that appointment actually took place, maybe it was canceled. Um, maybe it was and en actually ended up being two hours instead of an hour. All of that will be right in front of you. Efficient bill review and generation, like I said, this can be extremely time consuming if not done properly. It's not rocket science. Reviewing a bill and sending it out to your client is, is really not that complicated, but it can take a really long time and have a lot of inefficiencies built in if not done the best way possible. So when I talk about efficient, I mean really using your tools. I have to say probably bill review, generation, and also delivery are the three main areas where having any type of billing software, preferably legal, because you're able to get you know your rates set up and all those types of things, but having any sort of billing tool will help increase your workflow tremendously there. And it can cut you down from maybe two weeks of bill review to just a day or two of bill review. 
modern delivery options, being open-minded to how you can deliver not your invoices and other things to your clients because there are a couple things to keep in mind. One, you always want to have a backup delivery method. Uh, if you print, okay, print an email. If you email, why don't you email and electronically share? It will give you the more higher likelihood of immediate delivery to your client, them seeing it that much sooner and hopefully paying you sooner. But also think about security. If you're sharing invoices or even like retainer agreements or anything that's confidential to your client through, let's say, just email and you don't have it encrypted, then that's in, that's not secure. It could be accessed by other people. So there are more uh, secure encrypted methods of maybe not so much for invoices, though a lot of people use it, but also for your documents and your agreements. Uh, you want to definitely use more encrypted secure formats. And then with collections and replenishment for retainers, uh, it's all about having that process in place, having some sort of reminder or a way for somebody to see easily each and every month who owes what, and to be able to notify them quickly. Because again, if it, what I always say when it comes to collections is right now, if I do monthly billing, let's say I'm wrapping up my billing for August, I should be doing my collections for July. So every month there is both a billing cycle and a collection cycle, and it should be just like a running machine so that my clients are always being reminded, they know I mean business, I'm not gonna just drop it that they haven't paid their invoice, but it's uh, not taking any really additional time for my staff. And then having fully integrated payment options, I have to say that, I mean, obviously check and retainer um, entries have that every software really should support that, any legal specific software. But definitely in the cloud space, uh, the legal tools that are available have a lot of great payment options uh, specifically related around credit cards. So if you're currently receiving credit cards or even considering it, there's a difference between processing your credit card and then making an entry in your billing system versus one that's fully integrated. Because if you have, um, like for instance at Cosmlex, we integrate with LawPay. So what happens there is your client can either pay by clicking on a link on an email, or they can click on a button on the client portal, they pay online, you get that payment, great. But the integration also inputs the billing entry into Cosmlex, so you have the transaction, which is the invoice payment, your invoice is being updated in terms of status, and it also makes the income entries because we have a general ledger as well. So that whole workflow gets completed for you, which is not only efficient, it sounds great and convenient, but it also promotes accuracy as well because you're not doing as many entries. So just a few things to think about in terms of modernizing your cycle. Do know that whenever you're looking at a new tool, we always suggest to first identify what is most needed for your firm. The items that I talked about today, some may be more important to others. So you want to think about you, your staff, um, the type of work that you do, your clients, and decide what really is the best fit. Not all tools are created equal. While billing may seem straightforward, you also want to think about how you're accounting for your costs and also your income, as well as your trust accounting for your retainer management. Those are very closely related to your billing. So having a good billing setup is of course the first step, but you also wanna ensure that it communicates well from your retainer perspective and from your income and accounting perspective as well. Some tools do offer these functions uh, together, separately or integrated. All right, so we'll take the next uh, couple of minutes to wrap up uh, today's presentation, but I do want to show you, as I said, a visual of a modern billing software. As I mentioned, Cosmlex is a cloud-based practice management tool. We do contain everything listed here. So in addition to billing, we do have the accounting and the practice management as well. But of course, right now we'll be focusing on the billing functionality and uh, specifically, touching upon those modernizing points, like how to really take your billing cycle to the next level. So let me switch into the program. And the first thing I wanna show you is I am on the matter page. All right, so of course I have all of my matters listed here. You wanna ensure that you have a time tracking mechanism that fits your firm. And 
flexible too, because sometimes, especially like I said, there's multiple attorneys, they might have different preferences. So of course you can enter on your mobile device. Um, we have an app so they can enter it that way. You can enter an individual time card. You can run a timer up here and go about your work throughout the application. You can even complete matter details here as well. But maybe you're more of a multi-entry person. Um, maybe you like to jump back and forth between timers or have a timesheet, which is what this is, where you can have 30 or 40 entries that you're working on and at the end of the day, you're gonna go ahead and enter them. This is a great way to manage those, jump back and forth between timers if you need to, and uh, create time cards in bulk all at once. That too is very much modern functionality, you know, being able to leverage your technology to help with your billing. All right, the other thing I do want to talk about is I, I said that 360 degree view, it does promote accurate billing. I know that when we talk about billing, um, we don't often think about your calendar, your tasks. I know many law firms that manage all that stuff through let's say Outlook or 365, but how do you make sure that those actually get billed? So if I go within a particular file, let's say I have one highlighted right here. Here is my 360 degree view. Everything's in one place. So not only can I see the billing, which is the invoices and time expense, but I can see the email communication. I can see the events that are upcoming. I can see the tasks that either have been or need to be completed. I could see notes. And every item in the system can be marked as billable to ensure that that item actually gets billed for. Now, in Cosmox, we actually have a little bit of a unique function, which is called the money finder. So whenever you have your billing and your practice management together, you want to have a really good understanding as to how those items get captured. In the case of uh, Cosmolex, what happens is you can mark a item as billable, and if you don't make a time entry, once that item is complete or the time has passed, it's going to show up on your dashboard. We actually have a dashboard area right here called the Money Finder. So these are all entries. I have events, I have tasks, I have notes, which I said were billable, and I never made a time entry for. So this is how you can kind of see the list, and ensure that a time card's actually captured, because ideally you want this list to be completely empty. So you can go through and empty this out and ensure everything gets billed. When I talk about efficient bill review and also uh, the generation of your bills, I'm gonna go over here to activities. And of course you want the ability to generate individual invoices, but also do a batch in case you need to. So here, especially if you're doing routine billing, um, definitely leverage whatever billing tool that you have to really cut down on that time. So if I click create, it'll let me know what matters have a balance. So I can generate invoices for all of these, right now it's six people, all of these six people at once, I can get those invoices generated. Our system does generate that as an unfinal invoice. So you'll see that I have some here that are not locked, which means I can make edits. So I can make an edit right here, but of course you can print it and make edits that way as well. And once that is done, you can go right here and finalize. And that of course will lock for edits. All right, we talked about delivery. So I'm sure emailing is not new to anybody. I do hope that you're utilizing that even if just as a backup uh, function, but of course you can print, you can email, and it's not just about delivering by email. How are you doing it? Are you sending an individual email per client or are you using a batch function? So like here, I can select a whole bunch of clients that have invoices and then go ahead and click email. I have a template and that template will populate for each person and I can send that all right off. So it takes a matter of, you know, maybe a minute or two as opposed to a couple of hours to get all of those bills out. Another delivery I mentioned was Client Portal. I did pull up the Client Portal just so you get a sense as to what that is for, you, for those who may not be familiar. So I have my portal here and I'm logged in as Jim Collins. So I'm the client. You're seeing what the client sees. So there's a dashboard here. There's an invoice area. There's events and tasks and documents. Whatever I choose to share with this person will display here. But they also have the ability to see here 
uh, I can download, I can view, and you can also pay your invoices through here as well, as long as you're using that uh, law pay integration. Click a button, pay online, and again, that gets processed fully through your system. Client portals uh, are typically encrypted. Ours is 256-bit, so the communication going back and forth between you and your client is, of course, secure. So if anything, it gives you a secure location to save uh, all different types of items. In regards to collections, uh, as I said, this is one area, if you're not already, utilize your tools, because all the data is here. We know what's been billed, we know what's not paid, we know how long it's been. So here we actually have an invoice reminder function where you can see exactly who owes what since when. And you can still call the person, you can still send a letter, you can use traditional methods, but from an efficiency standpoint, I can still email, I can see exactly what that template says, I can change it and send that email out to however many people are on my overdue list, all at once and they get their invoice, the overdue invoice in this case, attached as a PDF. So just a couple examples of how you can really take billing uh, to the next level. I suggest doing the same thing for your retainers, uh, staying on top of how much a person has in a retainer or even, uh, let me just give an example here, setting a minimum. You know, what's the lowest the retainer should get for this person? I have $2,000. Knowing what that ground floor is, what's the lowest before you go ahead and seek replenishment. That whole concept is called evergreen retainers. So you want to try to avoid retainer depletion as much as possible because that will just add to your plate of collections. All righty, we have a great giveaway for today's uh, webinar, a free PDF download uh, that'll be available in the handout section or you can visit uh, cosmox.com, uh, our legal billing uh, resource center and uh, download the Avoiding Compliance Issues When Getting Paid. Go ahead and add that to the handout here in a second. Uh, just so everyone knows, this is, uh, as Erica mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, our webinar series. This was part one of Modern Legal Billing. Uh, part two and three uh, are listed here. They'll be on the 20th and 27th. Uh, you can also visit, see our website uh, for details on those. And lastly, um, we want to thank everyone for attending today's Cosmos webinar series presentation. We, ho we hope it was uh, helpful for you and your law firm.